Well, I was a healthy child. I was uh, born and raised in North Massapequa on Long Island and uh, had a pretty normal life and went to college and became an RN and graduated in 1979. And I started dating Robert my senior year in high school and uh, we got married actually in 1980. I didn't, didn't like him much when I was in high school but somehow in my senior year, and he was in his second year of college, um, we went sleigh riding one night, and I guess everything changed after that. Uh, right after we got married, um, things, were, things were pretty normal, but I started to have some symptoms, um, nothing terrible. We didn't know what it was. As a matter of fact, I used to kid with a father that he sold me a bill of goods, you know, when he gave me Gina because before we got married she seemed very healthy and after we got married we started noticing these problems. I had some infections that wouldn't go away, I had some fevers and some arthritic symptoms and eventually came to get diagnosed with an, uh, an immune deficiency and eventually um, I had to take a gamma globulin to help that. She decided to take the treatment, and it was it was kind of trauma traumatic experience because, you know, this was the era of HIV, and so, you know, the decision to take the treatment, you had to convince yourself, and the doctors convinced us that the product was free of uh, HIV. We like to ski, and we uh, have been lucky enough to be able to spend time skiing. And uh, Gina used to be the type of skier that would ski till noon and then go in and she was done. But this particular Sunday, she skied well past lunch. She skied in the afternoon and about three o'clock in the afternoon, she lays down on the snow and says, I can't do it anymore. So I said, you can't do it anymore. You've never skied this long in the you know, last 10 years. That was wonderful. We'll, we'll just go home. The next day was bad. The whole day I knew. I said, I'm, I'm in trouble. And I just, I just, you just know, you know, you just know when something's really bad. And when, when I asked him to take me to the hospital, I, just didn't, I knew I wasn't going home that night. It was almost like flicking a switch that she was healthy and skiing, and the next day, she's in liver failure. So it was rather dramatic, I think. I, I think I knew by the end of the week when I was home, the doctor called me and told me that it was hepatitis C. Unfortunately, she acquired it from an infusion of a gamma globulin preparation that was being used in the 1990s to help treat an immunologic disorder. I was very angry at the time. I was very angry. I was very bitter. Um, uh, I went. I was. It, I went through a really bad depression afterwards because I was just so angry that it, I felt it didn't have to happen. So much of my time was being spent angry, and I didn't want to live my life angry. So I just stopped being angry one day. So you turn it around. And I got involved with the American Liver Foundation. Uh, I run a support group for hepatitis C patients. Gina is really fighting liver disease on every front. She runs the support groups and has that peer network with other people who have liver disease. So she's there to help them emotionally go through this. Making sure other people who know less than she knows get information so they too can stop being depressed and find a path to either be cured or to understand that they're not alone. I can't tell you how many people have said, I was in a point of crisis and then I spoke with Gina and she helped me. She actually founded the Liver Life Walk in Long Island, which started one snowy day in April about 11 years ago and has grown to be one of the largest walkathons that ALF does in the country each year. I run the um, rebirthday for our transplant patients. All of our transplant recipients, we have a sort of a birthday party for all of them each year. And that's 
sort of my event and I, I love doing that. It's very special. She helps people deal with the hands that they are dealt and she makes that journey so much easier for them. She had her dark times and she is now helping so many others through their dark times. In 1997, she underwent treatment with the then prevailing standard of care of interferon therapy, which consisted of three injections a week. And unfortunately, Gina experienced some pretty severe side effects. We discovered after 11 months that uh, the interferon sort of triggered a pretty severe case of lupus. So it's been decided that interferon is not good for Gina. Like so many patients who have other medical conditions that essentially preclude the use of interferon, she's waiting for that day that we all hope will come when we can give combinations of antiviral drugs without interferon. Well, today's the big day. I'm finally getting my liver biopsy after a good number of years. I haven't had one since 1995, so I'm pretty anxious to see what the results are. I'm a little nervous, too, to be honest. Liver biopsy remains the gold standard when you really feel you need to know how far down the road towards cirrhosis a patient has traveled to optimize your ability to make decisions about what treatments or perhaps withholding of treatment at the present time might be in the best interests of the patient, particularly in Gina's case where therapy poses some major potential concerns as a result of uh, the uh, side effects she experienced when she did take interferon. I'm not happy that I have hepatitis C, but having hepatitis C, I wish I didn't have it, and I hope I get rid of it. But it actually has brought a lot of joy into my life because my life has changed so much. I've got to do work that I really enjoy doing. Um, over the years, I've witnessed how the, um, the advancements in uh, the medications that have been introduced and how the research has really affected the changes in people's lives and how, uh, you know, how I've seen people get cured of, of hepatitis C. And, you know, it's really been wonderful to witness that. It's, it's really been a positive experience. And really, that's why it's so important for us to continue efforts to raise money for education and research, because through those efforts, maybe someday there'll be a cure for my wife, Gina, um, and for everyone else that out there is affected by liver disease because it's, it's, it's important there are so many people who are affected by liver disease, so many people who don't know they're affected by liver disease, and uh, it's an, an important endeavor that we have to continue to strive to, uh, to achieve. And that's why I continue to do what I do. <laughs>